Support and resistance are the most important technicals you need to be able to identify in the stock market. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Thinkorswim to automate the findings of your support and resistance levels. All I ask in return, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, and let's just jump in. So we are going to come up here to studies. We are going to edit studies. You all use this screen all the time. This is where you add your RSI, uh, stochastics, moving averages, all that. Well, we are gonna go to create. We are going to be utilizing code for this. It's going to be very, very simple code. Trey, I don't know how to code. Trey, I don't have time to learn how to code. I promise you, you can do it in a second, and I'm going to walk you through the steps right now. And actually, if I go ahead and just name the study here, uh, let's call it SNR Finder, Support and Resistance Finder. Um, it's actually already got most of the job done for you. The default little plot of code that a, a new study gives you is plot data equals close. I'm not going to change anything. Let's just show what that runs. It is uh, showing you where the candle closes on the daily chart on whatever time frame you're looking at it is just plotting the close of that candle that's fine and dandy tray that doesn't really help me though how do i get it to plot where supports and resistances are and that is from the function highest or lowest obviously highest for resistance lowest for support i'm going to plot the highest close um, and we're actually going to do close of previous bar because we don't want it to plot today's close. That's not helpful. Uh, the highest close of previous bar over whichever amount of bars you want it to look at. So now we are looking at the highest point plotted from the bar previous rather than the current bar because if it plots the current bar, then we never actually get any real information uh, about today's price action, which is... If you're trading, you're trading today's price action, right? Uh, over the last 20 bars. Now, once I hit apply, notice how your cyan line here that you can probably barely see because it's integrated into the uh, bar chart right now, but <clears throat> notice how it's going to change. So I hit apply. It is now showing you the highest part of the last... Uh, the highest close, sorry, over the last 20 bars. So over these last 20 reference bars, it is giving you, it is plotting what the highest close was. It is plotting right here uh, was your highest close over the last 20 bars, correct? Um, and what are the four points that you get from a bar? Uh, you get close, you get open, you get high, you get low. I can come in and do the same thing. Say, well, I want to see the highest high of the last 20 bars. So let's go ahead and adjust that up to the highest high. And then let's also turn on, I'm going to plot lowest equals, and this is just your name. You can call it whatever you want. This is the name of your plot. You could call it a uh, zippity doo da for all I care. Uh, that part doesn't matter. And then, <laughs> and then just like uh, we use that highest function, we're going to use lowest in the same way. Let's plot the low of, of the previous bar over the last 20 as well. Uh, let's go ahead and hit apply. And you will now start to see how you can identify support and resistance levels. You can identify where the chart that you're looking at has bounced off of before. And just so you all know, this will work across any time frame. If I go into the five minute on SPY here, as it takes a second to load, uh, you will see it's plotting the same. Whenever you have a study in Thinkorswim, it is useful across, by the way, I didn't even notice SPY is up above 401 today. Nice. Go on bulls. Um, but <laughs> Thinkorswim will automatically plot that study on whichever uh, whichever chart you're looking at. And just look at the five minute today. Look at how something like this, well, SPY had bounced off this level before. Uh, this was the lowest area over the last 20 bars. So as SPY, you know SPY is in uptrend today. I want you to imagine this, and we're not going to get too much into this, but I want you to imagine you have a, uh, say you turn on a, a, a 100 moving average and you do something along the lines of well if spy is over its 100 moving average that's how you know it's trending up and if it's trading at or below its previous support level over the last 20 bars you know now that spy is in uptrend and it's pulling back towards previous support imagine you're longing at levels like this and if you continue to follow along with this channel i will show you how you can automate that sort of testing as well I like to keep my videos in bite-sized portions, so we're not going to jump into automated trading today. 
but subscribe to the channel. We will jump into it. Uh, and look back here as well. Uh, you have you have SPY is below, coming from below the 100 SMA and into its previous resistance levels from the highest point to 20 bars back. Imagine you enter a short around here. Look at the kind of runs you get. So you can start to see kind of the ideas that this can provide you. And one more thing I would like to show you as this directly pertains to day trading, if you're looking at an intraday chart, I know a lot of people will trade a five minute chart like this, but they will still base their trades off of days previous close or days previous high or low, something like that. So I wanna show you how you can aggregate daily highs and lows onto an intraday time frame type chart as well. So I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna have to do a quick definition. I'm going to define uh, let's just call it Y day for yesterday equals, and we're going to set right now, we're going to set this equal to, um, let's just do close. Let's use the close of previous day. Once again, you can do open high, low, or close. Those are the four data points you get from a candlestick, right? Let's just do it as yesterday's close right now. And within every open high, low close, you can set a period variable equal to um, aggregation period. And then there's a lot of different, you can see, you can set any certain aggregation period. You can even do the monthly, the weekly, if you would like to on this, um, the yearly open or close, if you would like to trade that, but let's do the aggregation period day. So now we have this defined as your um, Y day. Let's actually, we don't even need to just define it. Let's just go ahead and straight up plot it. Will that work? That will work, look at that. Um, so now if I hit apply, First thing you're gonna notice, there's a lot of lines on this chart, um, but second thing you're gonna notice, it is plotting. Uh, it's actually, oh, you know what? This is plotting today's close. Apologies, one more thing to change in our code, and if you've been watching a lot of my ThinkScript videos, you will know this, you might have yelled at me already. Uh, we want to see yesterday's close. So we go ahead and open bracket one, close bracket for yesterday's close. So now you can see this kind of brighter cyan line on our chart. Let's actually come in, I'm gonna show you one more tip. With every plot you do in a custom study, you can click on the cog, and I don't wanna see uh, the current data or, <laughs> or zippity doodah as we named the low. So I'm just going to turn off the show plot bubbles. And then if I hit OK and apply, uh, you're only going to see uh, one, the simple moving average that we turned on. I'll turn that off as well for now. Um, but now you're only seeing yesterday's close plot that we have in. So where SPY closed at yesterday is now being plotted on your chart. And it's, so now you, have, you can use that as your support and resistance levels. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you. I can change this to high if I want to. I can now see where the high of yesterday was. So once again, imagine you're a breakout trader and you only want to play SPY or you only want to play a stock if it breaks yesterday's high. Uh, so if it breaks day's previous high, sorry, that would be down here from this instance that you would have had to do it early this morning. Let me find you a better example. Um, uh, say here. Uh, out of open here or after I think this was fed news it broke yesterday's high you got it you got a high previous breakout there uh, you can play that and you can do the same thing with this instance as well uh, you can make this highest of the um, of the sorry you would do it like this you would do uh, high sorry once again debugging and coding uh, you would do highest on the outside bracket like this of the high from previous bar over the last, let's just call it five bars. I think this will work, it will work. So now you can see the highest point of SPY in the last five days is plotted rather than just the day before. And you start to get an idea and I'm not gonna just keep insulting your intelligence you now should understand hopefully that you can then do this same thing with lowest you could do it with the close you could do it with the open there is a multitude a multitude a multitude of different ways you can use this and once again follow this channel we will do some automated testing around strategies using this but today's video is just to teach you all how to get it set up and it's very simple just a couple of types of your keyboard and you can have this done uh, if you have any questions while you're trying to set this stuff up my, yourself please let me know in the comment section down below i'll do my best to help you i also stream over on twitch uh, every single market open morning from 7 a.m to 10 30 eastern come there ask me questions if you have any about your code as well i do not mind answering with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and sign out of this video make sure you all hit the like button Make sure you're subscribed and I will catch you all in the next one.